Hello, my name is Dorota Babilas. I work at the Institute of English Studies. Uh, I'm passionate about the 19th century, the British monarchy, and a few other interesting things such as costume dramas and the musical theatre. And uh, today I'd like to talk with you uh, a little bit about uh, who next will sit on the throne of the United Kingdom and uh, how Victoria became queen and the present queen of course as well. Uh, as you probably know, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, II uh, broke all records for the length of reign in the United Kingdom. Uh, she has been sitting on the throne for 68 years now and still going. The second place uh, is held by Queen Victoria, uh, who ruled for 63 years. And before her, her grandfather, King George III, who ruled for 60 years. Uh, so how the uh, throne is inherited. So how do you get to be the king or queen? Uh, the old rule, the system that has been uh, in operation for hundreds of years was called male preference primogeniture. The word primogeniture comes from Latin, from the word primo or primus meaning the first and genitus meaning born. So whoever was born first got the throne with male preference, meaning brothers got the throne before the sisters. And if everybody was grown up, married and had children, then brothers and their children uh, went before sisters and their children. So um, how did this law result in the UK having two queens in the last two centuries, meaning Victoria and now Elizabeth II. And why was it changed only in 2013? Uh, of course, we could start earlier. We could talk about uh, um, earlier great queens in the history of England before the unification with Scotland. So uh, Elizabeth I and uh, the Bloody Mary that you may remember uh, from, uh, from history, or we could even go further back in history and talk how this law got England entangled in the Hundred Years' War with France. But we don't have time for this today. Come to the Institute, you'll learn more. Uh, I'd like to talk with you about the uh, um, reason why Victoria became the queen who sat on this throne for such a very long time. So let's start with the man on the third, um, with the third place, so King George III. As you can see here, he had a very large family, 15 children, 13 of which are presented here in this collection of royal portraits by Thomas Gainsborough. Uh, two of them are missing. Uh, one, it's quite interesting, is the boy number two, and uh, he was not in England at the time when these portraits were painted. The, uh, the youngest daughter was not yet born. Uh, some of you may remember the film The Madness of King George, which told about the true story of King George having some sort of mental breakdown towards the end of his life uh, and the problems it uh, created for the royal family, for the parliament, for the entire nation. So yes, it did happen. If you remember the film, um, if not, Sorry for the spoiler, the king recovers at the end, but he did not recover forever. His, uh, his health uh, deteriorated again and uh, he spent uh, the last few years of his life um, completely without a touch. Uh, without touch uh, with uh, reality. So his eldest son, also called George, who would uh, at the end, so after the death of George III, become George the Fourth uh, was given an additional title. The eldest sons of the monarchs of uh, of the United Kingdom are called the Prince of Wales, 
uh, but uh, George, the Prince of Wales, was given by the Parliament an additional title of the Prince Regent when the King was so ill that he could not perform his official duties. And as you can see from the caricatures that uh, um, are authentic caricatures from the late 18th century, he was not a very popular Prince. Uh, the King of Wales was a uh, uh, a man who loved to party, who loved to eat and drink, who even, according to some, uh, took drugs and he definitely liked the company of women, uh, uh, but uh, for a long time he remained unmarried, we'll return to that. Uh, so he was not popular because he was doing all that with the public money so the caricaturists would call him for example the Prince of Wales not Wales like part of the United Kingdom but like this big animal that uh, the Prince was uh, supposed to resemble because of his large size. Uh, the next in line before Prince George married were his brothers, Frederick, Duke of York, the one who is missing from this big collection of family portraits, then William, Duke, Duke of Clarence, then Edward, Duke of Kent. Uh, the child number four was a sister, Princess Charlotte, or Charlotte, the Princess Royal, which is a tra traditional title for the eldest daughter of the, of the sovereign, but because she was a woman, she was relegated to the end of the line. So after all the brothers, and as you can see here, it's not only these five kids, but or six with uh, with George, uh, but we have two more sisters, then three more brothers, then two more sisters, and two more brothers, and the last youngest sister. Uh, so uh, it was a very large family, 15 children altogether. Uh, and the brothers and their families took precedence before sisters and their families. So the most important thing became for the Prince of Wales, the Prince Regent, to marry. And uh, uh, an appropriate German princess from a Protestant family was found. Her name was Caroline of Brunswick. This was a massive scandal. Again, we don't have time to talk about that, but uh, it was probably hate of, from the first sight, like the opposite of love from the first sight. They did not like each other one bit, but of course everything was arranged, they had to get married, and somehow they managed to produce a baby together. This baby was called Charlotte. She was named after her grandmother. Uh, Princess Charlotte of Wales, the first royal celebrity, before Victoria, before Diana, before all the modern royals who are pestered by the press, there was Princess Charlotte of Wales, the daughter of the Prince Regent. She was pretty, witty, intelligent, charming, and everybody loved her. When she was 18, she fell in love and married uh, Prince Leopold from a very small German king, the princedom called Saxon Coburg Salfeld. Saxe Coburg Salfeld. Uh, there was a fairy tale wedding with a a lot of coverage from the press. Uh, then soon enough, Princess Charlotte became pregnant and then suddenly and very unexpectedly, she died in childbirth. And the child, who was a boy, died as well. So all the hopes of the royal family were damaged, were uh, completely devastated at one go. So uh, the prince of Wales, her father, the Prince Regent, tried to divorce his wife, uh, Princess uh, Caroline, uh, but he was not granted the divorce because the public opinion and the parliament took the side of the princess, who was, according to their view, a wronged party in this marriage. So uh, he became king, he was crowned after the death of his father, but he produced no surviving children. And after his death, the throne came to his younger brother, the younger surviving brother. Uh, if you look at the dates, um, uh, 
the Duke of York was dead by then. So the next in line was William, the Duke of Clarence, who had to um, separate with his long-standing mistress, a comic actress of all people, find a proper German princess, marry her and try to produce babies. Uh, they were not successful. So what happened then was the next in line would be Edward, the Duke of Kent, brother number four. But by then, and we are talking about 1837, he was already dead. But before he died, uh, he managed to marry again a German princess, the sister of this unfortunate Prince Leopold of Saxe Coburg Saalfeld. She was a widow. Uh, she had two children already, so it was known she could have more. And soon enough, they had a baby together called Victoria. So after the death of his two brothers, George IV and William IV, the crown, quite unexpectedly, came to the only daughter of the next brother in line, Edward, the Duke of Kent. And this was Victoria. She was only 18 when she uh, was uh, um, proclaimed queen and uh, she reigned from the 20th of June, 1837 to her death on the 22nd of January, 1901. She married a German prince called Albert, her cousin, actually. They had nine children together and after Victoria, uh, Victoria died, the throne came not to her eldest child, who was a daughter also called Victoria, but to the second child, the boy, um, Edward, the Prince of Wales. He took the name of Edward VII and uh, uh, he was one of the monarchs who, uh, who benefited from the male preference primogeniture. From what we know of Princess Vicky, she could have been a better monarch perhaps than her brother. She was very intelligent, she was very hardworking, and poor Edward VII was a party animal like the wicked uncles of Queen Victoria. So um, what we have here is um, the case in which this rule of male preference primogeniture worked in the uh, favor of the brother um, before the sister. After his death, the throne came to the second son because the eldest son, Albert, Duke of Clarence, was already dead. He died young, he caught the flu and died. So uh, the next in line was his younger brother, George, who became George V. And then he had children and two of his sons also were crowned. King Edward VIII, who quite famously abdicated because he wanted to marry an American divorcee called um, Wallace Simpson. And then the throne passed to his younger brother George, who took the name of George VI. He was the father of the present queen, so George VI and uh, Queen Elizabeth, the queen mother. They had two daughters, Elizabeth and Margaret, so when George VI died, Elizabeth took the throne because she was older but also because she had no brothers. If she had a younger brother he would have been the king. So um, what happens now? The queen has four children, they are all uh, grown up and married, some of them for the second time. Uh, they all have their own kids so the line of succession is that the eldest son, Prince Charles, is the next in line, then his elder son Prince William and because he is married and he has children, uh, his children are next. So Prince Charles, then Prince William and then Prince George, Princess Charlotte and the little Prince Louis and only then Prince Harry and his, um, his child and the rest of the family. And this is the moment when the Succession Act was changed. So uh, what we have is uh, the 
Parliament passing a new law called the Succession to the Crown Act in 2013, just as uh, the uh, Duchess of Cambridge, so Catherine, the uh, wife of Prince uh, William, was pregnant for the first time and nobody knew what sex the baby will be. So uh, this was the moment when the United Kingdom, the Parliament and the royal family decided to finally um, introduce a more equal procedure called absolute primogeniture in which the eldest child inherits the, tr the throne regardless of their sex. It so happened that the eldest child was a boy, but if it was a girl first, she would be next in, uh, in line before her brothers. Uh, so that's it. That's the story. And uh, uh, as you can see now, uh, with uh, the next change on the throne, we are going to have a king anyway, maybe. Prince uh, uh, Prince um, Charles, maybe Prince William, maybe Prince George, but there will not be a queen for a long time, very likely. Uh, so uh, this was quite a lot of what ifs. Uh, here you have um, a few uh, language exercises like uh, try to uh, find the correct answer of what if if uh, uh, there was no Princess Charlotte, if Victoria was uh, not the only child and uh, if uh, uh, the child of, uh, of Prince William and Princess uh, Catherine uh, was not a son but a daughter, what would happen? So that's it, it was very quick. Come to our institute and uh, you'll learn more. Thank you.